Texas. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. of creationcalendar.com and we're going to be doing our second in the series on the uh, the lunar solar calendar and um, why it is and how it is that one should uh, maintain Sabbath and also keep track and observation of the feast days as cited in Leviticus chapter 23. Troy, are you there, brother? right now let me see if we hey Troy can you hear me Okay, hold on. Uh, um, I apologize. I don't know. Let me check my audio settings. That's weird. Just to make sure. Test, test. My microphone is going on correctly. Uh, oh, it's Troy. Oh, okay. Ah. Uh. Okay. All right. Thanks, son. It's weird because we just tested his setup like five minutes ago. Um, but I'll try to call him again and see what is going on. Uh, but everybody, just hold on. We will um, get this situated. I don't know, you know, what changed in a matter of four minutes. Um, it's odd, but we will see if we can get them back on. Um, it's odd. He's still connected with us, but is not hearing us and I'm not hearing him. I'm going to try to call. All right, everybody, um, I will be right back. Okay, bear with us, everybody. I'm going to make a call real quick. Yeah, I'll be right back.
Warning. 30 seconds of silence has been detected. Please speak into the microphone uh, to disable this message here. and continue the broadcast. Okay, yeah, um, I just got a warning from TFR as far as silence, but uh, we are trying to get the guest on. Um, he's checking his audio settings now, and um, hopefully the, that will be the resolution to the issue. Do you see what I'm talking about, Troy? I see the three dots, but there's nothing there. It says audio and video settings. Yeah, you got to click on that. Straight to video. And I don't have. I, there's. I don't know how to get it to audio. Um, maybe try hanging up the call and then come back on with us. I'll call okay. you. Then. All right. Uh, and then if not, do you have your other uh, account still set up? Yeah. Uh, yeah maybe I we should try that. How to get to it. Okay. Okay. Try me again. All right. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. All right. Thanks for your patience, everybody. And um, this was a uh, his secondary account, so we'll, we'll see if we can add him once more. And if not, we'll try it. Hey, oh, yeah, we hear you. Can you hear me? Hey, I'm there. Okay. Great. All right. Uh, I just I clicked back to the first home page and it and it said join call. So I mean it gave me a different button that I saw before. I, I thought I joined already. I I got it said your name and everything on the top, but uh, I wasn't hearing or seeing anything. <laughs> so sorry about that. I'm here. Sorry. Okay, great. Yeah, no, at least it's uh, resolved and uh, yes. we can move forward. Um, but yeah, let me give you a chance to give out your your website contact and sure. all of that information and um uh, yeah uh, it's only been a few minutes so all right uh, my name is troy miller my email address is admin a d m i n at creationcalendar.com and uh website is www.creationcalendar.com and the telegram channel which has the same information that is on the website is uh t dot m e slash creation calendar okay great um and just to uh you know bring up as because we did the show last week and i had shared a link that you had sent to me or that i had received in um one of your newsletters and it was you know this woman who had talked about uh, seeing the barley and um, the storks and all of that there in Israel, uh, but yet you sent me three other witnesses that are saying that they are not seeing uh, the barley on the roadside and uh, things of that nature. So, and we will share that in the um, the the link. But I we should open with that and okay. talk about yeah. Um, I initially thought it was going to be a 13th month and then I received some intel from a friend of mine or a new friend, a cyber friend I guess I should say that it's possibly that it wasn't going to be a 13th month added this uh, year so I looked at that and then I started looking for the evidence and I did find the link that I sent to you but w at what was posted on it then when I sent it to you I had found, I guess it was the same link she had said that the barley she would, had found was still 30 to 45 days away from being mature, which is why I sent it to you. And then apparently between the time I sent it and the time you opened it, uh, she had changed her position to that she had found barley. But that was one witness and she could, you know, toggle back and forth. Um, and then I found the other three witnesses that said, no, there is no barley. So I don't know that we can. I mean, if, you start looking at the Torah about the law of witnesses, and if you have a contradictory witness, it's kind of difficult to use them as a, a witness. So, um, you know, I have three other witnesses, the links I did give you, which you can share to your readers, where they all said that uh, there is no right barley found. I don't know what the, the case is with the one lady who, you know, went from one position to another. Um, it's not like I know her personally, so I can't say, but at yeah. this point, I, I don't trust her witness because she toggled back and forth. Um, 
and you know, I feel bad that if I misled anybody, that's that's the only thing I'm my concern was. Oh no, I mean we are all, you know, learning together, and um, and you know we're not there in Israel, so we're having to uh, rely upon a secondary, <laughs> yeah. you know, secondary persons and people yeah. that are on the ground there. So, um. But I wanted to ask you also that she had mentioned um, the seven um, crops that you know the that are coming to bloom there in Israel, and I'm I was assuming that these are also these seven. And I'm, you know, to get your um, answer on this as far as what are and do you know the order of the crops that come to uh ripening over the feast of you know weeks leading up to pentecost uh, and shavuot um i don't know that they all ripen or i'm not sure what the order is but there is that one passage uh when it's referring to the hail uh the plague of hail where it said that uh, there was the three that were smitten i'm trying to find it here real quick that's exodus 9 i believe and um let me see if I can find that. There we go. This says, uh, but the flax and barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear and the flax was bold, but the wheat and rye were not smitten. And uh, there's another place, another translation that talks about fitches and betches and whatever have you. Uh, I do not know the order in which they ripen, but uh, um I don't know that I have a fixed opinion about that. That's something I haven't really dug into as far as the order uh, in which they mature. I was just wondering, um, you know, but I, do you think that um, the seven weeks are for, you know, a different omer of each one of those, um, the, the I, different uh, crops? I had never considered that. I had never considered that. Um, that's probably worthy of some some investigation i hear you're a world-class uh investigator researcher <laughs> so, <laughs> i mean you you came that was one of the uh the accolades that somebody that i guess we both know said about you so i'm just repeating the rumor i heard <laughs> well so. i appreciate that um you know, <laughs> i think uh, you're probably uh, similar in that regard um but yeah so let me let's continue then as far sure. as uh where we are we're, as far as the calendar um we had celebrated passover just you know a couple of days ago on wednesday uh mm -hmm. and you know i was still going by uh that witness that you had um sent to me um right but you're saying that there's going to be a 13th month a dar two and that we would be in that month now which would make right pass over the eve of full moon next, next month. Yes. Uh, and I also had another question about that, uh, that somebody had sent to me about the second Passover and who and why uh, people would celebrate that particular event. Okay. Um, as I recall there, I don't remember all the details about how that command came about. Um, I guess what what interested me the most is that was the only feast that there was a second chance for. You know, that, that uh -huh. was the only one. That, I mean, you can't keep tabernacles in the, in the eighth month. You know, it's, yeah. it's only the seventh month. The Passover, you have a second chance. And apparently <clears throat> there were some people, I think they were, they were unclean for some reason. I think they were burying their dead or something. And that makes them unclean for seven days. And so they were, they were torn because now they couldn't participate and they were, they were, uh, distraught and approached Moses about, you know, hey, you know, is there, you know, can, is there a second chance? And the, Moses didn't know, of course, so he approached the father, and the father said, let them keep this, the Passover in the second month, you know, on the 14th day. Now, notice unleavened bread was not part of that. It's just they were, they uh -huh. could keep Passover. So I thought it was interesting that for, because somebody was concerned that the father gave them permission to keep it on a date that, you know, it wasn't, I mean, it's like keeping your, uh, anniversary a month earlier a month late you know so right, right. I, I thought that was very interesting and, and compassionate for that matter because here was somebody who was distraught they had missed it knowing how right. important it was and you know went to moses in this in distress and uh found out that or the father actually gave them permission to do it in the second month i just thought that was pretty interesting 
Right. Well, it is, um, you know, the very interesting topic, and I'm glad that you had insight for all of that. Um, uh, I do want to get you to explain uh, your take on Shavuot, and um, I had always thought that in looking at, and I should probably bring it up here, um, uh, in Leviticus 23, how it speaks about the seven perfect weeks and then that mm -hmm. you celebrate on the morrow after that seventh Sabbath, which if you you know um, follow all of those, the seventh Sabbath would be on that um, the eighth of Savan. And right. so I had, you know, always celebrated um, Shavuot Pentecost on the ninth of Savan, which would be that first day of the new working week, the 50th right. day. Yeah. Um, honestly, that's the, exactly the way I initially observed the account to Pentecost when I was first exposed to um, the festivals. And I, my, my testimony is, is that my first experience with any of this was keeping the feast. That's somebody approached me with uh -huh. that. And of course I was raised a seventh day Adventist and they don't keep feasts. And I didn't want to keep the feast because I thought they were all nailed to the cross. You heard that last time when I was on the air. And uh, uh, right. so anyhow, upon investigation, I was wrong. But, but I, when I was introduced to the lunar Sabbath, some, I don't know, maybe a year or two after I started keeping the feasts, I mean, anybody who's been keeping the feast for any length of time know there's probably three or four different uh, camps out there in feast keeping land where uh, anywhere from the 7th to the 8th to the 9th of Savan is observed somewhere by somebody around the world, uh -huh. each having a different idea of this count to Pentecost. So I had been exposed to that and I'm like, well, you know, Passover is given a specific date. It's the 14th day of the first month. And, you know, of course, Unleavened Bread is the next seven days, you know, starting at the 15th. Yes. Every one of the other feasts has a pinpointed date, except for Shavuot. It's like, what in the world? Why is that? And so my before I figured out the answer, I was just coming to grips with the lunar Sabbath. And I was remember laying in my bed looking at the ceiling fan. And I said, you know. If there's any truth to this lunar Sabbath, I bet it'll unravel this mystery about the count to Pentecost. And lo and behold, it did. And uh, honestly, I mean, you, you doing it on the ninth of Savan, you're basing that on the knowledge that you have. And I, I dug and dug and dug and dug. And the information I have here this evening will probably stretch your minds. <laughs> it'll exercise them. I mean, you're, there's going to be some moments when you smack your head and say, oh, why didn't I see that? You know, uh -huh. and because the information is there, it's not difficult to see. It's just we have been trained to think a certain way from churches and what have you. I call it churchianity, um, you know, that we are or predisposed to view things in a certain way. And, and then it, we can become fixated with it and we it's hard to move us off of it. And because I had never kept the feasts or anything, I was and maybe a little bit more inclined to dig and try to find out what was going on. And I did, I, I did dig. And I can tell you that uh, um, the Feast of Eleven, or excuse me, Shavuot is not on the ninth day of Savan, even though that's the way I did it for the first several years. And I have a lot of evidence here to share with your listeners to well, prove that. You sent that me a 12 page article. So yep. I'm saying, yeah. yeah, you've got quite a bit of information. Yeah. on this and so yeah if I, won't, you would, I won't read i won't read all 12 pages but i high, i've picked um well t uh, scripture says you know two or three witnesses you know shall the truth be uh determined d uh -huh. discerned and i have probably six or seven is that enough evidence is that enough witnesses yeah, i would think so yeah and <laughs> they all, also you know, you know um i'm sure that you uh don't mind sharing your study if people yeah. contact you and email you and also uh, for those that are interested you can contact Troy and get on his newsletter he does send out monthly uh, the timing for the correct days of uh, Sabbath and also the witness for the the uh, new moon and uh, Rosh Kadesh so um, give you give that email out one more time sure uh, oh sure. it's yeah admin at creationcalendar.com just ask to either be added to the newsletter list or any of the studies if you're not sure of the name just say you know the study you said about the pentecost or you know, whatever and i'll be i'll figure it out from there <laughs> but yeah i'll be happy to send you anything you request 
Okay, great. And like I said, um, uh, Troy does have a, a most excellent study on this, and so I'm going to allow you to, you know, take us through those witnesses. Sure, sure. Um, the very first thing that I examined is when was the wheat harvest um, in Israel, and that's not. I mean, while that might sound juvenile, it's like, well, of course, it's you know, it's, the, it's around the ninth day of Sivan. Um, the evidence in Scripture is is it's a whole lot more um, uh, educational than that. <laughs> That's just what we've been taught. But the Scripture does not doesn't support that. I've got a very short study here that has several uh, texts on it that I'd like to read to you. The first one's found in Daniel two thirty five. It says uh, this is of course the dream Daniel had, or actually Nebuchadnezzar had, and Daniel's given him the interpretation. It says then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken into pieces and became like chaff of the summer threshing floors. Chaff, of course, is the light, fluffy stuff that comes off wheat when you're threshing it, and it says it's in the summer, not in late or late spring. Uh, the next verse is in Exodus 9:25. Uh, uh, 31 32 and this is in reference to the hail that i i prefaced a little bit ago and it says the hail smote throughout the land of egypt all that was in the field both man and beast and the hail smote every herb of the field and break every tree of the field and the flax and the barley was smitten for the barley was in the ear and the flax was bold but the wheat and rye was not smitten for they were not grown up now if in order to have a wheat harvest in around the in early savan that had to be winter wheat that was planted. It's planted in late fall, usually around November, and it immediately sends up little spikes of grass about six inches tall or so, and it winters over, and then it starts in the spring, starts maturing. It takes seven months to mature, so if you plant it in November, it's ready to go in June, which is about where Savon 9 takes place is in uh, early June, typically. So, or early to mid-June, I should say. So here, this wheat, it says the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. So clearly, this the wheat that was planted in the Middle East at the time of the Exodus was not what we now know as winter wheat. This wheat, it says, uh, it was uh, hidden, or excuse me, it was not grown up. And if you look at the Hebrew, the underlying Hebrew for that, it means it was hidden or in the dark, meaning it had not even germinated yet. So th this, uh, the hail was took place uh, on or about the 10th day of a bee based on the timing between the different different plagues. So it was just a few days prior to Passover when the plague of hail took place. So if the wheat was not destroyed, that means it was not even grown up uh, yet. It wasn't because it destroyed everything. Every green herb was destroyed. And here uh -huh. we have evidence that it was not. So it was not this winter wheat that we were in reference to. The last one I have, actually the thir third one I have, is in Joel 2, 23 and 24. And it says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice for Yah your Elohim has given you the former rain moderately, for and he will cause uh, to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain, the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. If you know anything about grapes and olives, you know they're harvested in July and August, not in June. So here we have wheat, olives, and oil grapes all spoken of a harvest spoken of them at the same time in joel um remember the, the the title of this particular study if you want to see it and it's just a one-page study is what season was the wheat harvested so that that's a third witness and, and i i skipped a few that i i are not as important as these. I know the time is of the essence. And the fourth one I want to share with you says it's in Numbers 18, 12, and it says, and the best of the oil and all the best of the wine and of the wheat, the first fruits of them, which ye shall offer unto Yah, them I have given you. Again, we have oil, grapes, and wheat all mentioned at the same time, referring to the same harvest season as a first fruit offering. So if you know anything about nature, you run to uh, a dictionary if you're not sure and I have a Holman Bible dictionary here and this is what it says about the olives and the grapes uh, this is on page one uh, 1118 of the Holman Bible dictionary and it says this about the olives it says they're small rounded orchard trees with the narrow gray green leaves and small cream colored flowers in May the stone fruits ripen toward the end of summer and are picked well, that's all I need to say. So olives are a uh -huh. summer harvest. Grapes. 
it says they're grown either in vineyards or singly in shady bowers around the hose, homes and courtyards. They have long, flexible stems and tendrils and lobed leaves. Short flower heads grow among the new leaves in early summer. So you have short flower heads and new leaves in early summer, meaning the fruit is not even yet, even in early summer. Mm-hmm. So we have grapes being a summer harvest. All you have to do is look at nature. Remember, I, I, I try to tell you, anybody who right. listens to me, that nature is the first gospel. All nature mm-hmm. screams the majesty of Yah. And yes. nature doesn't lie. Men have a, have the capability of lying. Nature does not. So here we have evidence that wheat is a summer harvest. Well, that doesn't. Uh, hold on, Troy. We'll come All back. Right, we'll be right back, everyone. When Justin and I found out and started dreaming of what life would be like with her, where we would take her, what we would teach her, and of course, what we would read to her. One day we walked around a bookstore looking for books we might want for her and found nothing. So we started brainstorming what exactly we would want. Even from a young age, we wanted her to know and understand the heart of God and hidden truths that are in ancient biblical manuscripts like the Book of Enoch, and the idea of the Prophecy for Children series was born. Justin got hard to work and Praise Yah released the Prophecy for Children series. We are grateful for the support and amazing feedback from others who have been wanting the same for their children. We just found out we will be having a son, and we are excited to grow our family and to keep writing books for our children to share with our truth-seeking family. To order these books today, please check out the children's store at sacredwordpublishing.com. As a bookstore for truth seekers, it's our goal to make ancient manuscripts which were once held captive by secretive institutions available for public consideration. In our generation where wisdom has increased as Daniel the prophet foretold, we have access to many of the testimonies our early church brethren were persecuted for preserving. After being hidden for centuries, these manuscripts have been leaked from various sources throughout the earth. And it's our goal to gather these sources into printable form to make available for all who seek the ancient way. If you're looking to deepen your studies of the biblical narrative, find these ancient manuscripts and more at sacredwordpublishing.com. partnership with Sacred Word Publishing goes further than the publishing of ancient manuscripts and weekly video content. You also make a huge impact across the earth in orphanages in Myanmar, India, Uganda, and Kenya. Your support is crucial for the development of the Ecclesia of Real Truth Seekers. We thank you for joining us in hosting Secrets Revealed, Momentary Zen, the Digital Readers Club, Ask Me Anything series, and other shows that have helped lead so many to the truth of salvation. To become even more involved, please visit patreon.com slash sacredwordpublishing where you can partake in exclusive, interactive, patron-only content and help us continue shining the light of love in this darkened world. Looked upon the daughters of men and found them fair, and took up their wives, and their sons became of old great men of renown. So they have been mixing with us on a genetic level since the time of Enoch and Ezekiel's will. Here on earth we're retreat by the sun, moon, and stars And imagine there's got to be planets like ours So conceive of a face on the surface of Mars So in need of a meaning and purpose we've all And indeed they believe
that they might be our gods or that maybe with time we'll do right and evolve and eventually reach what they seek and then solve all the problems of man but they really don't know that they fall and the works of our hands are but just filthy rags so we travel the lands to dig up our past time our lapses and with it all much of the facts of our magic that gods came in All right, welcome back, everybody, for a second portion. Let me turn it back over to you, Troy. You can continue okay. with your explanation. Round two. <laughs> yes. Okay, I, I prefaced that it, the, it could possibly be winter wheat, and this is the way my mind works. If I said, okay, if winter wheat, wheat is planted in the fall, and in order to get a you know early June you know or Savon 9 harvest around that area, area if that wheat doesn't work, then what wheat, wheat is used in the Middle East? What wheat was planted at, in that era? And you can find that information online. It's not difficult to find. In fact, I, well, let me try to share my screen here. I think that I should try to do that. <laughs> I yeah, will sure. scroll up here and see if I can do it here real quick. All, All right. right. Uh, this is a page on the study that would be available to you, and I'm going to see if I can start sharing am i sharing a screen yet uh, yet. it is coming up yes okay it is okay okay well i guess i can read this to you um this is actually where did it come from okay speaking of the ancient near east of uh, the historical atlas of the bible page 11 says this and i'll scroll down or scroll up here it says quote cereals were the main agricultural crops as wheat and barley are indigenous to the region barley is, was a currency in mesopotamia as early as 2000 bc modern bread wheat is a hybrid crop but the ancient native emmer wheat is still grown widely as it is much hardier okay so that gave me a name Okay, so emmer wheat. So I went to Wikipedia, which you can see my little cursor there, and this is what it says. Oops, I changed something on my screen there. Okay, Wikipedia says this. Emmer had a special place in ancient Egypt where it was the main wheat cultivated in pharaohic times. Well, was pharaoh around when the exodus was taking place? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to skip a paragraph here, but you can see the, the link that I'm highlighting. I probably shouldn't highlight it. Maybe you can't see that. But anyway, so this is a quote from archaeology. About you know, you can see the link there. Uh, the earliest quoting, the earliest evidence of the use of emmer wheat is from the site of Ohalo, to where hunter gatherers collected wild emmer thousands of years ago on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, which is uh, in what is today Israel. So emmer wheat is planted all throughout the land of Canaan. That was what was planted anciently. And if you'll come up here to this paragraph here, care to guess when emmer wheat is planted and harvested? It's planted in early spring, and it takes four to five months to harvest after being sown, which is uh, the link that says this is also listed right there. So we have this emmer wheat that is, con it's called summer or spring wheat because it's planted in the summer, or excuse me, planted in the spring and or harvested in the summer. So it, it carries two names. Uh, spring and summer wheat, but the other one, even though it's harvested in the spring, is always called winter wheat. And you can buy winter wheat now; you can make bread out of it. But apparently, uh, it is a hybrid. Uh, it's not; it wasn't even available thousands of years ago during the time of the Exodus. Now, I have no idea how to stop sharing my screen, so or do I? Uh, it, it's share. fine. Yeah, you can Canc just hit the cancel. Same. Did I, did I cancel yep. it? Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. awesome. So here we have evidence that it was something called summer or spring wheat that was planted in Israel, uh, not the winter wheat, which would be available around Savan 9. So obviously the first three months were be, would be considered the spring months. The second or the second set of three uh, months, four, five, and six would be summer. Uh, seven, eight, nine would be fall and 10, 11, and 12 would be considered winter as far as uh, the seasons go in scripture. So uh -huh. um, if uh, well, let me ask you this. Um, you have, do, do you, is, I don't know if this is your belief or not, but I have heard this from other feast keepers that they believe the Ten Commandments were delivered on Shavuot. Have you heard that or do you believe that? Yeah, yes. Uh -huh. That is your present belief or you've heard that? Okay. Um, yes. I'd like to address that if I may. I'm going to go back to my screen here for just a moment. And I had something highlighted earlier because I was going to share it, but now I'll share it. I'll share it now. 
Uh, on or about Savan 9, just remember that. Let me go back to my and start sharing here. Um, you've heard of the Book of Jubilees, I presume. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. It says this, and I'm quoting. And it happened in the first year of the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt in the third month on the 16th day of this month. And Yah spoke to Moses saying, Ascend to me here on the mountain and I will give you two stone tablets of the law and the commandments as I have written them. You mm. shall make them known. So if Israel didn't even arrive at Mount Sinai until the 16th day of the third month, then it's not possible for Shavuot to be on the ninth day of the third month. Right. Now, I realize some people, yeah, it's not, I mean, this was, again, this is me looking under every rock. This is the way uh, I, I, <laughs> this is the way I look for things. Now, uh, this is good. I like this. Now, the, I, I can, some people don't look at Jubilees as being scriptural. So I do have a, a scriptural, I mean, I, I look at it as being an important Hebrew document. Otherwise it wouldn't exist. So, yes, I agree. But I, I mean, people don't, I mean, the reason it's not included in scriptures because it's, you know, maybe not inspired it's a historical document rather than a prophetic document but anyway uh, i can also prove this very same thing in scripture in two places it starts at exodus 19 this is uh right before they got to uh, mount sinai and it says in the third month when the this is 19 verse 1 exodus 19 verse 1 in the third month when the children of israel were gone forth out of the land of egypt the same day came they into the wilderness of sinai so the question is the same day as what and in context, it's the same day that they came forth out of the land of Egypt. So, uh -huh. which of course they did in the first month. So right. now we're going to we're going to run over to Numbers 33 uh, because that's where this particular um, event is addressed again. Moses is just basically recording things in time, you know, historically recording it. And this is Numbers 33, verse 3, and it says, "And they, meaning Israel, departed from Ramses in the first month on the fifteenth day of the first month." On the morrow okay. after the Passover, the children of Israel went forth out with a high hand in the sight of the Egyptians. So some people stop reading there and say, oh, well, then it must have been on the 15th. Uh, no, keep reading. Uh, let's read verse 5 and 6. And it says, and the children of Ramses moved, excuse me, the children of Israel moved from Ramses and pitched in Sukkoth. Now, if you'll look at a Bible atlas, you can find, if it's a good one, you'll find Sukkoth is only about 30 miles away from Ramses. It's pretty difficult to move 1.2 million people, you know, pretty very far in one day, but apparently they made 30 miles, which is actually pretty good. So, but, uh, in Sukkoth, but yeah, exactly. But Sukkoth is still very much in the land of Egypt, which is in the context of uh, Exodus 19.1. Then read verse 6. It says, and they've departed from Sukkoth and pitched in Etham, which is in the edge of the wilderness, meaning the wilderness of Sheen there. That's the Sinai Peninsula. The, that was the border between Egypt and the wilderness. So this was the day after when they actually, the day after the 15th, when they actually left the land of Egypt. So all Exodus 19.1 is saying that Israel left, or Israel arrived at Mount Sinai on the same day of the third month that they left Egypt, the land of Egypt in the first month. That's all that verse is saying. It, sa it sounds kind of convoluted. It's, it's like, you know, surely the author could have written it better than that, but that's really all it's saying. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Well, basically, that's the 16th day of the third month, and we have Jubilees 1-1 saying the exact same thing. So we have two uh -huh. verses. Okay. Awesome. See how I tie that together? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. again, if they arrived at Mount Sinai at the 16th, they, then Shavuot cannot be on the 9th. Right. So that's that, that's that we've covered, I think, three witnesses so far that prove that uh, where... It's in the summer, not in the spring. So uh, if you want me so, to just keep, keep yapping, yeah, if you want to ask questions, <laughs> you yeah, tell me. Question, a question real quick. Uh, okay. So I'm guessing that um, the time that the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles was also on the 16th. Is that is that correct? Because wouldn't uh, Christ fulfill the, the holy days on the same as what was fulfilled previously? Now, are you referring to Acts 2, when Pentecost was fully come? Yes. Uh -huh. um, well, I'm not saying that uh, the, third, the 16th is Shavuot. I'm saying that's when they arrived at Mount Sinai, which proves, uh, okay, that, so, which proves that Shavuot uh, is not on the 9th. 
Right. That, that's, so, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. I haven't. Okay, I haven't well, even said when. I haven't even said when the feast actually takes place yet. Okay. We're building. Let's build continue, that and then you yes. can answer that question. Yes. Well, I'll, how about I answer the point you just brought up right now? Let's okay. talk about. Let's talk about Acts two. This is verse one and verse thirteen, uh, where uh, this is verse one says, and when the day of Pentecost is fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. When I see that word fully come. To me, that leaps off the page, meaning that they actually made the effort to count properly. Mm-hmm. Because this is actually two counts, that seven Sabbaths complete and the 50 days is two separate counts. Uh, now, let's read verse 13. Ah, ah okay. Okay? Huh. And here we have people mocking. Now, if you count uh, verse from verses Acts 2, verse 9 through 11, the, it, it lists 17 or 18 different language groups there. And they were all hearing Peter in their own tongue. And, of course, there was some mocking there. And in verse 13, it says, Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. So, and what was Peter's response? We're not full of new wine. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions here. <clears throat> One is, two, new wine is not fermented. You can't get drunk on new wine. Uh-huh. New wine is fresh grape juice. So right. it's a, kind of a it's kind of a stupid accusation. Point two is just a little bit more poignant. Here is that grapes are a summer harvest. There was no new wine that existed in uh, at June 9th, you know, or Savan right. nine, I should say, right, in right. Early June or mid June. Uh-huh. So you can't get drunk on new wine first of all, and you can't get drunk on wine that doesn't exist yet. Right. I mean, they hadn't even harvested the new wine if the feast was in the spring. But if it was in the summer, then the accusation holds a little bit more water because, okay, you're drunk. They can't get drunk on new wine, but there would have at least been wine available to them. And if this was at the actual, when Pentecost was fully come, which I think that's the the most poignant uh, part of that particular passage is because the meaning that they counted it correctly. I'll be honest with you, Zen. This is something I learned. It was kind of a hard pill, bitter pill for me to swallow that the 50 day from wave sheaf that most of us do. Now, granted, doing Savan 9 is not 50 days from wave sheaf. You're actually including the new moon days in there, which I appreciate because that shows you're at least making the effort to, because you're making an account for them, if you will. Right, but, right. Uh, and translation. The 50 days, yeah. yeah, the 50 days from wave sheaf is actually the Catholic version of Pentecost, which I did not know. But digging a little, find a little research is like, oh, well, if it's this is the Catholic version, then what's the real version? This is really what set me on this journey um, when I found that out. So it's like, okay, well, it doesn't surprise me. There's a counterfeit Sabbath. There's counterfeit marriage. There's counterfeit, you know, feasts. I mean, we have beast uh-huh. days versus feast days. I mean, everything has been counterfeited. So why wouldn't there be a false or a counterfeit count to Shavuot? Right. So, um, you know that it just stood to reason. I, I didn't get too wrapped. I didn't get angry about it, but it did um, set me on a journey, or actually helped. You know, set me on this journey, and which no, I no, that's great that it did. I appreciate uh, it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, you're you're answering a lot of uh, questions and making a lot of sense and tying a lot of scripture together in a I, manner that yes. uh, most people. It's, have not. It's so. pointing. It's pointing to one specific thing, and and so far everything I've covered is that Shavuot is not a spring feast, right? And it's pointing toward a summer feast. I haven't given you a date yet, but I, we're going right. to tie those in with some of these other witnesses when we get to it. Okay. So, awesome. Yeah, and this was this to me. This is one of the most riveting studies I've ever put together, and one of the most comprehensive because I it, it took. Well, usually you barely can scrape up two or three witnesses. And I just kept finding witness after witness after witness. I've already given you four witnesses that prove that it's not in the spring. And uh-huh. there'll be more witnesses coming that prove when it actually is. But anyway, uh, this this what it did is it cemented in my mind that the lunar Sabbath or the lunar calendar, uh, the whole well, the creation calendar, whatever you want to call it, was very much real, very much alive and very much um, untainted, even after all these years of the, you know, the churches and the papacy and whatever have you butchering the written word that we have. Right. And in reality, what all they've done is they programmed us to think a certain way we can read the ink on the page and still not see it what it's saying uh, how many times did i read acts 2 about the you know you know getting drunk on new wine 
Uh, right, I, right. I, I drink Welch's grape juice all the time. And I, you know what? I've never gotten drunk on it. <laughs> yeah. And that's what that is. That's new wine. It's fresh pressed grape juice. It hasn't fermented, you know. Uh-huh. So, but I, it never dawned on me what I was reading. Well, when, if you really want to learn, you kind of have to forget everything you thought you knew and just read with like it's a blank Absolutely. sheet of paper. Right. And if you can't right. do that or don't know how to do that, then it'll be very difficult for you to come to certain conclusions. Right. Yeah, I find that uh, every time I come to a new revelation that is massive in scale, mm-hmm. I have to reconsider all of Scripture once more and yeah. read it with new light and perspective. Yep, exactly. So you've you've been there, you've done that. So uh, maybe yes. not maybe not for this particular topic, but you've been there. Right. Um, like I said, your research with other is, topics, absolutely. Yeah, your 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 research your. Your reputation precedes you regarding your research. So, <laughs> oh, thanks, brother. I appreciate that. And you know, I'm always open to learn new, uh, especially when you know I did not know um, prior to you know new re- new revelation like this uh, information coming to me. So yeah, I really appreciate your study and um, sharing with us and helping us to 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 make sense of all of this. So, Thank you. Yeah, please oh, continue. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, okay, let's see what we might be next. I think we covered about the uh, the winter wheat being a hybrid, um, you know, that wasn't even available then. So I can take that one off the page here about the. Actually, that's five witnesses I've shared with you. <laughs> so I'm I'm actually getting through this faster than I thought I might. Um, here's another witness. Uh, the problem with counting the seven Sabbaths and the morrow after the seventh Sabbath as the fiftieth day. Um, is that it ignores new moon, uh, something that you have recognized is in by coming to Savan 9 rather than Savan 7 that most feast keepers land on, um, is the fact that when you're counting uh, seven Sabbaths complete, there are new moon days in there. In fact, there's new moon days that are between the first and second month, and then there's a new moon days between the second and third month that have to be right. considered. Now, when it says to count a Sabbath complete, that just means one, two, three, four, five, six Sabbath, one, two, three, four, five, six Sabbath, and that's it. That's all it's counting is a complete week. That's just a Hebrew idiom. Uh, Sabbath complete is a Hebrew idiom for a complete week. That's all that means. It's a figure of speech. And if you understand that, then you, and, and if you understand that the new moon is a third category of day, which most lunar Sabbath keepers recognize and some feast keepers even recognize, is that, you know, wait a minute, the new moon seems to be a different. It's, it's like a hybrid day, if you want to call it something. Uh, it's not a week. It's not a work day and it's not a Sabbath. It's kind of a, a combination of both. So if you start recognizing that the new moon is in there, then by coming to Savan 7, well, let, let, me, let, me, let me bring, I'm going to go back to my screen here real quick. If I can find something here. Where'd that study go? There it is. All right. I'm going to figure out how to do this screen save again, maybe. And this document here. And I need to scroll to the right page. Okay, here's um, a little illustration that shows the Sabbaths complete. We have the 14th being the preparation day for the 15th, which is the second Sabbath of the month. The wave sheaf would be the 16th, the morrow after that Sabbath, as you know, Scripture is talking about. Right. So on the, t- on the 22nd there of the first month, we have the first Sabbath complete, second Sabbath, and we have new moons that we aren't counting. Uh, yeah. You see the four weeks in the uh, in the second month. There are f- uh, three, four, five, and six, and then the seventh Sabbath complete is the eighth day of Savan, which is why you right. landed on the ninth day of Savan, the yeah. morrow after the seventh Sabbath, as that uh, Shavuot. Um, if you'll number the days between sixteen and nine, you'll find here's where I'm at sixteen. You don't count sixteen, but you have one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, because now we're counting days. You're counting 50 days now. We're not counting, because that's what we're saying is that the Shavuot's 50 days from wave sheaf. Okay, I've forgotten my count. Where was I? <laughs> 7, 9, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. I should have just counted, added 29 to my count that I had. But anyway, if you come to 9 here, you're either, depending on the number of new moon days here, and here, uh, you'll either be at day 51 or day 53, depending on how many new moon days you have. Right. That, that's not day 50. Right. I mean, so how, how can Savan 9 be, I should count them out. Um, it's hard to do that. There's, 
and I don't know how to do this. I, it's hard to do it with. I can count it quicker when I'm using a pencil rather than this stupid cursor. But <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, six and seven is thirteen. Fourteen, fifteen. Then you have uh, twenty-eight and fifteen is how many? Somebody do the math real quick. Forty-three. Yes, I believe it's forty-three. Thank you. So forty-three. Oh, it can't be. Yeah, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two. So, and that's just using uh, a two-day new moon here and a one-day new moon here between the the first and second month and the second and third month. So the right. Savon nine from from wave sheaf is actually 52 days when you have two and one days of new moon between there it's not day 50 it's day 52 so uh -huh. that should be a red that should be a red flag for people and we don't i mean because if you're you can't say it's 50 days from wave sheaf if it's not 50 days from wave sheaf but that's what we're saying well i'm adding a day i'm adding a 50th day to the 49 week well it doesn't that's not what you're told to do that's what we've been doing but that's not what we've been told to be doing so Let's look at uh, what it's actually, well, that's not yet. Um, uh, there was one more place in the New Testament that I wanted to show everybody. This is in John, actually, I have it print, printed here. Let me, I'm still sharing the screen, yes? Yes. Okay, here we are. This is in John uh, 2, 3, and 4. Um, we're starting right here at this paragraph, all right, that I have highlighted. It says... Um, that the events that I'm about to share with you took place shortly after Passover, after uh, Yahushua cleared the temple the first time. And that's in John 2, 13 through 16. It says, after an evening meeting with Nicodemus, he headed to Judea for a short visit with John, who was in the region. That's John uh, 3, 22 to 36. And then he headed toward Galilee. And that's John 4, 1 through 3. On the way, uh, Yahushua, the earth carpenter from Nazareth, exhausted by the quick trip, stopped in Samaria to rest. John 4, 4 where he encountered the woman at the well, which you know about, John 4, 7 through 26. It says, Later, when his disciples returned with food, they said, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Where therefore the, past, the disciples said to one another, Has somebody else brought him something to eat? And Yahushua said to them, The meat uh, is to, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say ye not, there are yet four months and then comes the harvest behold i say unto you lift up your eyes and look to the fields for they are white already to harvest well wheat is what is white ready to harvest if this is in passover time the only the next harvest is going to be the wheat harvest and here it's shortly after the first of after passover and he's saying there are four months well guess what if the wheat harvest was in savan nine he just said three months right, the harvest. right he doesn't he says four months and obviously, when it says white, ready to harvest here, he is absolutely referring to the wheat harvest. Now, the wheat would have just been planted. If this is summer wheat or spring wheat, it would have just been planted about the first of the first month, you know, beep one and beep two, somewhere in there. And if this is shortly after Passover, that's roughly two weeks away, uh, maybe two weeks and a few days, depending on how long it took him to do the traveling. And so it would have been blades of grass. So he's saying... He's saying, hey, there are four months to harvest. They could have turned around at the wheat field right behind him, and they'd have seen those little blades of grass. And he said, behold, I, look over here. He says, behold, look here. I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are already white. For He's talking about a harvest of souls, not wheat, but he used the wheat as a metaphor. And they full well knew that the harvest was four months away, not three. So we have here another uh -huh. reference. We have another reference that the, the wheat is, in a, is a summer harvest, not a spring harvest right so now that i'll address i'll address where i was going earlier i think um and that is the first part of leviticus this is where the rubber starts hitting the road and i know we're probably have to be fixing to go on a hard break because we're right at nine o'clock and we're probably fixing to hear some music so before i get there it probably is going to start i'm guessing <laughs> right about two but minutes I, actually so. two minutes okay well that's just enough to get me in trouble then um, I'm going to tease you a little bit, that's again, I guess. It says, in verse 16, it says, And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the, the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the, the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto Yah. Uh, the, word even, uh, the words even unto are going to be what I'm going to address. Uh, that is translated incorrectly. Um, if you have a Strong's Concordance, 
Um, let me. I'm still sharing my screen, aren't I? I should have yeah. took, taken that off. I'm sorry. I should have. But no, I didn't. it's Please fine. Me. It's fine. Here we go. This is what I want to point out to you. Okay. Some have said that this ad or odd. This is Strong's uh, 57. Um, 04, which is right here, even unto, is comes from ad or odd. They'll say that that doesn't mean from. Well, this word here does. This Hebrew 4480, it actually is there. It's right here in the Strong's, and it means from, but it's not translated. Even though it actually is in the Hebrew, it is not translated into English. And the, the point I want to make is that, and I know we're fixed to go into a hard break, and I probably shouldn't start this, um, but this even unto is mistranslated down here it says look this is what strong says it says whether of space even unto or time during while or until that's how it would be used well is this count to pentecost about space or is it about time okay that's we'll be right back to. everyone for <laughs> yes we will hour. yes and then we'll When Justin and I found out we were having a little girl, we named her Eliana and started dreaming of what life would be like with her, where we would take her, what we would teach her, and of course, what we would read to her. One day we walked around a bookstore looking for books we might want for her and found nothing. So we started brainstorming what exactly we would want. Even from a young age, we wanted her to know and understand the heart of God and hidden truths that are in ancient biblical manuscripts like the Book of Enoch, and the idea of the Prophecy for Children series was born. Justin got hard to work and Praise Yah released the Prophecy for Children series. We are grateful for the support and amazing feedback from others who have been wanting the same for their children. We just found out we will be having a son, and we are excited to grow our family and to keep writing books for our children to share with our truth-seeking family. To order these books today, please check out the children's store at sacredwordpublishing.com. As a bookstore for truth seekers, it's our goal to make ancient manuscripts which were once held captive by secretive institutions available for public consideration. In our generation where wisdom has increased as Daniel the prophet foretold, we have access to many of the testimonies our early church brethren were persecuted for preserving. After being hidden for centuries, these manuscripts have been leaked from various sources throughout the earth and it's our goal to gather these sources into printable form to make available for all who seek the ancient way. If you're looking to deepen your studies of the biblical narrative, find these ancient manuscripts and more at sacredwordpublishing.com. Your partnership with Sacred Word Publishing goes further than the publishing of ancient manuscripts and weekly video content. You also make a huge impact across the earth in orphanages in Myanmar, India, Uganda, and Kenya. Your support is crucial for the development of the Ecclesia of Real Truth Seekers. We thank you for joining us in hosting Secrets Revealed, Momentary Zen, the Digital Readers Club, Ask Me Anything series, and other shows that have helped lead so many to the truth of salvation. To become even more involved, please visit patreon.com slash sacredwordpublishing where you can partake in exclusive, interactive, patron-only content and help us continue shining the light of love in this darkened world.
All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. We're joined by Troy Miller of creationcalendar.com this evening, and he is explaining the timing of Shavuot and Pentecost, which is a really incredible study. And so let me turn it back over to you, Troy. Thank you. Hopefully the the presentation is clear and concise. So I was sharing my outline of what I was going to do tonight with a guest here um, at my home earlier, just kind of practicing because I've been gone for a week and my brain is really not, I mean, I'm still fried from being away from home. But anyway, uh, hopefully this is con clear and concise. That my What I strive to do is witnesses, 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 context, context, context. And if you've got, you know, two or three witnesses saying the same thing or pointing in the same direction, then we are as as believers, as truth seekers, we are obligated to seek out where it's pointing, even if it's not right. a direction that we think it should go. So hopefully I'm presenting a, a compelling case is, is my hope. But I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. We're going to go back to um, the underlying Hebrew in you let me know when this when it's there. I need to drop the screen down, I think. OK, is my screen showing now? Yeah, I have it. Okay. Um, my okay. my son, he's not um, posting it to uh, okay. the live stream, okay. which is still fine. But um, I'm on. Well, I'm on the bottom of eight and top of page yeah. nine. If if you want to post, yeah. if you want to put that online or on screen there. Yeah, um, I will. Okay, very good. Anyway, right. um, as I started to say earlier, that the first word, the uh, Hebrew word fifty seven oh four, which is ad or odd, um, does not mean from. And but there is a word oh, there. Okay. There is I'm a word sorry, there. Troy, uh, my son is he is oh, posting he is. it and it is live to the okay to the YouTube. So, so great, awesome. Stand corrected. Thank you, son. Okay. I appreciate yeah, sorry. it. Sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, credit, thank you. Credit where credit is due. <laughs> yes. So anyway, you see a little arrow there. I'm pointing to a word that is in the Strong's. It's in the uh, Greens interlinear. It's actually in the Hebrew, and it's 4480, and it does mean from which is not translated into english so basically if you also read about strong's about this 5704 says where it says even unto it says if we're talking about space then it should be translated even unto but if we're talking about time then it should be translated during while or, or until so well obviously if this is a count to shavuot it's not about space so it's about time so this has been being misapplied uh, and uh, in this this whole time, and you know, believers have just not caught on that we're reading the King James English and trusting that somebody did their homework. And in this case, I'm proving that there is a mistranslation in the King James. So the Hebrew actually could be translated while, because that's what this word right here, this 5704, if we're talking about time, that could have been translated while. And I'm going to actually put this word from there, while from the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, show you number 50 days which is what the uh -huh. Hebrew is actually saying. And there is actually a translation, the Fenton translation, that says that. This is the only translation I have found. If you know anything about Fenton, he was a crusty old sailor, a cap sea captain, and I don't remember what set him on his journey, but he had a, an epiphany, I guess you might say, and he wanted to learn Hebrew and, and Greek so well that it would be as if he were in the room when the events in the scripture were happening or when the uh, uh, the author was actually writing it down. That's how intimately he wanted to be acquainted with the underlying Hebrew and the Greek. And this was his, it's a one man translation, which typically that's kind of sketchy usually, but this is what he came up with, with this verse. He says, you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath that you brought the wave sheaves, seven Sabbaths, they must be complete. Then after the seventh Sabbath, you shall count 50 days. I don't think you can get any clearer than that. And that's what the right, underlying right. That's what the underlying Hebrew is saying based on the meaning of these words, this ad or odd and the 4480. And I've forgotten what that Hebrew word is. But anyway, there is another place where the same uh, in this uh, verse 2316 right here, uh, it says it uses the same exact words. And here, if you'll notice, this is uh, verse 16, and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. That's the same words right here. You have, while from the morrow, look up here. You have uh, 4480 and 4283. Here we have 
4480 and 4283, the same exact words are in, this is in uh, Leviticus 23.16 and Leviticus 23.15, we have the same two words where they actually translated correctly, from, and up here in uh, verse 16, they did not. They actually, even though it's there, they actually ignored in the English, they ignored that from. So it's not like I'm making this up. I'm not just pulling this out of thin air. It's right there. It has been there the uh -huh. whole time. And it actually, in verse, uh, this the 15th verse, it says it twice. You have 44, 20, 83 there. And here we have uh, from the day, who, you know, uses Yom there, the 31, 17. So it actually translates that 44, 80 as from in this verse twice in Leviticus 23, 15, but they did not in the following verse, which is incongruent to say the least. But... <laughs> So we have right. a we have we need to correct our understanding of that even unto it should actually say while from and I think I've proven the case from the underlying Hebrews and as well as the the single witness the Fenton translation I wish there were more witnesses but all the other witnesses have been silent they've been incorrect they've just gone uh -huh. along with the crowd but the underlying Hebrew is hard to ignore I mean the the 4480 and the 5704 the way it's been misused the ad or odd at referring to time not space should have not should not have been translated as even unto it should have been translated as while during or until obviously you know which is uh, huge yeah exactly while it seems to be the most you know during you know the morrow no <laughs> Dur from while you know so you have to you know pick of, of those three but a while seems to fit quite nicely um, so we're kind of down to the crux of the matter. Okay, if it, if Savan 9 or 7, 8, or 9 is not Shavuot, then what day is the um, feast? And I'm going to go ahead and give up my screen here. I don't want to hog it. So I don't know what all you guys are. Am I off screen now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You can show whatever you want. So I'll just, you and I can just visit for a minute. So yes. my next question to your listeners is, um, how you know how can we figure this out what you know how do we determine what the actual date of this feast is because like i said rather than a fixed date we've been given an equation for this feast and i have a theory if you'll remind me to tell you what my theory is as to why that is and this is troy miller speculating remember i told you if i can't back it up with scripture nature or the historical record then it's just my opinion if it's just my opinion uh -huh. i will admit as much so if you'll remind me when we're done uh with this portion and ask me why I think this is, I'll, I'll give you my idea why the Father gave us an equation rather than a fixed date for this particular feast. But anyway, sure, sure. Um, my question to your listeners would be, if you want to know the date to Pentecost or Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, this is, okay, how how were we instructed to actually count? What, what right. instructions were we given? Okay. Uh -huh. And my question to them is, were we told to number 50 days and then add one day? Or excuse me, were we told to add seven Sabbaths, count seven Sabbaths and just add one day for a no. total of 50 days? No, no, we weren't. Uh, right. It's actually two separate counts. It's an equation. Yes. Now, the way I like to describe it is I'm five foot nine. And you measure the five foot from my heels and just go toward my head. The five foot ends somewhere on my neck. And then you add nine inches from wherever the five foot right. ended. And you continue right. on upward. What believers have been doing with this count is they've been counting seven Sabbaths complete, and that that's you know one yardstick. And then to count the well, that's okay. Let's say that's seven yards. Okay, now uh -huh. we're going to count inches. And even though they're told to count fifty inches, they run back to the heels and they count those fifty inches. Right. Well, why? I mean, if I'm five foot nine, you don't count both those increments from my heels. You count the five foot up and then you from the top of the five foot. That's when you start counting the smaller increments. Right. Well, you have seven Sabbaths complete. That's the large increment. That's the yardstick. Yes. That's seven. That's seven days. And then you have the smaller increments, which would be like the equivalent of inches. So what this is, this count is actually like saying um, the count to to Shavuot is seven feet, 50 inches. That's kind of what it's saying. It's, it's just like saying five foot nine, and you have to look at it as it's a continuation of a count. You don't, it doesn't tell you to run back to wave sheep and start counting single days. Right. You, I mean, time doesn't go backwards, time goes forward. So I start counting from wave sheep, and it says to count seven Sabbaths complete. Obviously that means ignore new moon days. So I count seven Sabbaths complete, and I come to a fixed date on the calendar. Yeah. And then it says, while from the morrow after the seventh, sabbath then shall you number 50 days uh -huh. 
So that, that's what it's saying, and that's what we need to do if we're going to count as we're told to. And, and under, I, I mean, remember, we found in many places, I think I showed you five witnesses that showed that the, the wheat harvest was a summer harvest, not a spring right. harvest. Yes. And I've, ch I've challenged that belief system. And so now I'm, I'm trying to, you know, uh, trying to, okay, stop challenging and start educating at this point. You know, yes, yes. okay, if it's not in the spring, then when is it? Okay, well, let's, let's do this. Okay, I'm going to get back on my, I'm going to scroll back to this calendar that I had or this illustration. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab the screen if that's okay. Yes, yes. Please. Okay. And you tell me when I'm live on the screens up, the pictures yeah, up. Yeah, you're good. Okay. All right. There's three. There's three separate proofs that prove when the feast of weeks is. And of course, I'm giving you the big giveaway right there at the big bottom in bold red right here. <laughs> it says it's the 29th day of the fourth month. Well, guess what? The 29th day of the fourth month is in the summer. Okay. Now I'm going to give you three witnesses. I'm going to. I never would tell you anything unless I can give you two, three witnesses if I possibly right. can help it. Okay. And I'll prove it three different ways. The first one is this. We're going to apply the count as we were told to. Okay. We're going to apply seven Sabbaths complete, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is ends on the eighth day of Sivan or the third month. Then it says from the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, that's the ninth. This is from that morrow shell. It doesn't say to count this morrow. It says from this day, you'll count uh, 50 days, 50 meaning days. the 10th. Will be the first day of that count. Does that make sense? Because yes, if the uh, ninth, if the ninth day was included, it would said it would have said from the seventh Sabbath. Show you number fifty. Right, days. right. It doesn't say that. It says yes, that's the only the way to get. After, yes. Yeah, that's the only way to include the ninth is if the count was we were told to count fifty days from the seventh Sabbath, but it doesn't. It says to count from the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. So now we're going to count ten being the first one. Well. Uh, there's 21 days left in this month. I took the liberty at, at, during the break to count these days, so I'm not going one, two, three, four. <laughs> you can do the math uh -huh. later if you want to, because I'll send you the study if you ask for it. Just ask for the the uh, count to Pentecost study, or uh, the when it's fully come. And anyway, so there's 21 days here, all the way to here, and then you have 29. 21 and, and 29 is 50 days. Uh -huh. Okay. You have you know that did, did that did I go too fast? No, no, you're good. Okay. No, we're 21 following. days to here. 21 days to there, then you've got a 29 day month or 29 days to there, and that's day 50. So day 50 or is the, is the 29th day of the fourth month. I have another uh, proof text from Scripture. This is a different count altogether. Do you remember? Um, in let's see. Well, let's back up all the way to the giving of the Ten Commandments. There, uh, Moses. They arrive at the 16th. Moses is immediately called up. To, this is fifth. The 16th day of the third month, immediately called up the mount. He says, Mo, or Yah told Moses to go down and tell them to prepare because today, tomorrow, and the third day, I'm going to come down on the mountain and talk to you. So today, tomorrow, and the third day, that means 16, 17, 18. So the father came down and spoke to them on the 18th day of the third month. Is that is that clear to everybody? Yes. yes. It, that's in, uh, oh boy, I had that text written down where he actually said that. Uh, today, tomorrow, and the third day. It's there in Exodus. Mm, mm, I can't remember. <laughs> you I think said it's, 19 before. It's I 19 believe. something, 1912, yeah. I wanted to think, okay. but I can't remember exactly. But it's in there. You look in Exodus yeah. 19, it actually tells them that. So, anyway, in Exodus 20, They've, they've done their preparation. Exodus 20 has the Heavenly Father come down and the, the Ten Commandments come thundering down from Mount Sinai. Absolutely scares the bejesus out of the Israelites. They run screaming in all directions and they say, Moses, you go up there and talk to him. We can't we can't hear. We can't listen to him. It, it's it's and the father says, it's OK, Moses. It's not you. It's me. So Mo, he, he called. He says, you do as they said. and You come up here. So on the 18th day. Moses goes up on the mountain. The father gives him the rest of what he wanted to say, which is the rest of the covenant. I mean, the, the Ten Commandments are part of the covenant, but there's more to it than that. And so on, at, the, at the end of the 18th day, Moses comes down off the mountain. This is now I'm in Exodus uh, 24 right now. The first because from Exodus 20 to the end, uh, Exodus 20, verse one to Exodus 23, verse 33. That's the entire covenant. 
it's, it's four chapters, 20, 21, 22, and 23. And in 24, you see Moses coming down off the mountain, and he reads to them, or excuse me, he orally recites to them what he heard on the mountain. And Israel says, everything that you have said, we will do. Then that night of the 18th, Moses writes the entire covenant down. And the next morning, this would be the 19th. I'm, uh, I'm reading, this is Exodus 24, one, the first seven verses of Exodus 24. Moses gets up and reads what he wrote the night before. And he's and th this time Israel says everything you have said we will do and obey and then there was a blood sacrifice they ratified the covenant with blood and then if you'll continue reading Moses was called up on the mountain and he was gone for 40 days and 40 nights okay if you're still looking at my screen I've highlighted the 19th at the end mm -hmm. of the 40 days and 40 nights when Moses came down off the mountain You'll, you remember the Israelites, they said, we, where's this Moses? We don't know what's become of him. Make us gods that we can worship. And they broke off their gold right. earrings. Aaron, yes. he capitulated. He was terrified because he wasn't. He didn't have the spine that Moses had. So mm -hmm. he makes them this golden image, this golden calf. They're dancing yes. around it. And Moses comes down the mountain. Moses is furious. He throws the, the, the stone tablets down. And uh, he, you know, you know the rest of it. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is in Exodus 32... Verse, I'm getting there. 32 verse 6, it says, oh, that's not it. Um, am I in the right place? I am in the right place. Okay, it's 5 and 6. I'm sorry. Uh, in verse You're 5 fine. and 6, Aaron saw it and he built an altar before it, And Aaron made a proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to Yah. On the tomorrow, Moses came down from the mountain and saw what was going on and smashed the, the stone tablets. Well, that word feast there is not modim. It's chag. And it means festival. And it's only used referring to the three traveling feasts. In Exodus 23, 30, 23, 13 through 14 through 17, 23, Exodus 23, 14 through 17, the three traveling feasts are listed in the covenant. You have Passover unleavened bread, you have Shavuot, and you have Feast of Booths, or Tabernacles. And those are the three feasts that all Israelite men were commanded to come up to keep every year from, uh, I presume, from age 20 on upward. If they're old enough to go to battle, they had to come to, uh, to keep the feast. So Aaron, being the high priest, is saying tomorrow is a Chag. That means it was one of the three traveling feasts. Now, that, remember, they hadn't traveled to any of these feasts yet. They're still in the wilderness. Aaron used the right terminology he was doing with the wrong deity. And if you'll read, Aaron is never punished for this. There's not a single thing is said about Aaron's involvement in this. The people that were asked for the God, they were punished. Moses grounded up and made him eat it. And I don't know how many of them died, but um, the point is, is Aaron had the right day. He just had the wrong deity, and I can prove it. Because here we have, remember he's, he said Chag. So 40 days and 40 nights. Let's find out when Moses came down on the mountain when Aaron called a feast. We have the 19th when Moses disappeared. So on 20, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 days in uh, this remaining in this month. 11 plus 29 is how many days? Uh, 40. 40. Moses was gone 40 days and 40 nights. He came down exactly on Shavuot. So Israel did indeed get the uh, Ten Commandments on Shavuot, but not in oral form. They got it in written form when Moses came down on the mountain with the tablets. Moses, of course, was furious, and he smashed them, and had, they kind of had to start all over again. But the point is you have two counts in Scripture that come to the same exact date that would be considered a Chag. You have the count to Pentecost as it's given in Leviticus 23 when you actually utilize you know, the seven and then the 50 and you separate them out and put them end to end rather than you know overlapping them it comes to the 29th day of the fourth month and then you have this 40 day count the day that aaron call a hug and you had the same exact thing the same end on the exact same date the 29th day of the fourth month now we have one more witness we have one more witness and this one is found in nature um that about that emmer wheat when it yes. was planted if you'll uh, look it up, the U.S. Department of Agriculture says that spring wheat or summer wheat takes 110 to 120 days to harvest. Okay, I'm back on the screen here if you want to look. From Abib 1, let's say that new moon day is not a day that they would have planted grain. They would have started right here on the second day. If you have 29 days 
in this month because we're taking away this first day. So there's 29 days re remaining in the first month, another 29 days, then 30 days and 29 days. Would you care what that total is? It's 117 days. Is that between 110 and 120 days? Mm -hmm. yeah. 117 days. This is nature. Remember I said nature is yes, the first gospel. Yes. Okay, so they had emmer wheat, which we know was planted in the spring. We already read you the information off the internet and from Wikipedia and some other links there, where emmer wheat was planted in the spring and harvested four to five months later. And uh, here, the, like I said, the U.S. Department of Agriculture says spring wheat's planted in, or it takes 110 to 120 days to uh, harvest and 170 days, 117 days absolutely falls between the 110 and 120. So there's three different witnesses that put Shavuot on the 29th day of the fourth, fourth month. Now, the, the first day of unleavened bread falls on a weekly Sabbath, the 15th day of the first month. The first day of tabernacles, 15th day of the seventh month, falls on a weekly Sabbath. It only stands to reason that uh, Shavuot would also fall on a weekly Sabbath, and right, it, absolutely, right. it absolutely does. It yeah, absolutely awesome. does. And this is using the evidence from scripture, nature, and the historical record. I have not stepped outside of the boundaries that I have strapped to myself. I hold myself to a very high standard when it comes to defining, finding, and dis discerning truth. And um, you won't, uh, and I don't deviate from it. That's the only way to be positive of what you're finding, if it's real or not. And like I said, you have to have two or three witnesses, and I've just given you seven or eight. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. What an incredible study. And I didn't cover quite a bit. There's still some stuff in nature. There's mandrakes, there's pomegranates, and there's all kinds of things in this study that uh, I, I left out for expediency. But if you would like this study, just ask for the scriptural count to the Feast of Weeks, um, and I will email it to you. That address is admin at creationcalendar.com. Yeah, that's amazing. And so, um, you know, that question that I had as far as the seven crops each being one of these the At weeks the end of one of those weeks seven, yeah. yeah that doesn't make sense here and especially since we have the the mention of the three crops that were uh summer crops um it would be interesting to see you know when the omers were uh right. yeah and what was offered uh, well, during. Uh, the other grains that were mentioned, the, the oh boy, what was it, wat, rye, and uh, the pitches and whatever have you, there it doesn't seem to be linked to any particular feast, but I suppose it could be linked to these counting of these weeks, but uh, we aren't certainly aren't told that uh, in Scripture yeah, anyway. Maybe, right. maybe it, there's anecdotal or historical evidence somewhere that would indicate that, but I have not found it or haven't seen it. Okay, so it would be the 29th. Um, day of the fourth month yep yeah, which is very much move. in the summer very much in the summer okay that's the month of tammuz after savan correct yes correct. okay of course well of that's course they, awesome yeah they didn't call it tammuz that was the babylonian name but yeah that's right the, right the modern terminology yes the, the tammuz they just call it the fourth month but absolutely you, it's the, oh right yeah. right because they were not they were not yeah. named. Yes, correct. So okay. And even awesome. a even a beeb, even a beeb is not a name; it's a title. It just means right. the month of green ears. Yeah, green so, ears. Yes. Yeah, the month of green ears. That's all it's a reference to. It's just a title, not a not a name. Uh huh. Ah, very very cool. Well, so that I was did, an incredible I'm, study, brother. Thank you. I managed to get through it, and uh, I was I was hesitant to, to think that I could, but I did. I talked real fast. And I'm sorry if I tripped over myself, but. <laughs> Oh, and I no, promised that you was I'd, great. Yeah, I promised you I'd tell you why I think that uh, yes. Pentecost was given an equation rather than a fixed date. Um, and if we're fixing to go into a hard break, so we're probably not going to get through it all. But I'll give you a teaser, and then we'll finish it up after the break. But yeah, we still um, we still have a little time. Yep the uh, the fit, the festival cycle the festival cycle is actually the plan of salvation in uh, it's a dress rehearsal right. for the plan of salvation. Yes. Everybody has a a, a uh, 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 unleavened bread or Passover experience. The Passover experience is first. That's when the Father delivers you without merit. You didn't earn it. He just delivers you. You're free. We didn't do anything to gain it. Then the next thing he says is, by the way, I want you to give up the leaven, the leaven representing sin, you know, spoiling the whole lump. Um, so then he, as a 
as a request, I freed you. You you haven't earned it, but as a request, I just want you to practice giving up sin for a week, for seven days. Give up the leaven. It's a metaphor for for sin. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, they do. Well, after a while, as you grow and you mature, you say, well, if I'm just kind of practicing, why can't I do it for real? So when you start doing it for real, you start when you start overcoming sin, you start gaining what is called the fruit of the spirit. Right. You start, mm -hmm. you know, you start overcoming things. You hit your meek, you're humble, you're loving, you're this, you know, you're kind. You have the fruit of the spirit. Well, what comes after the fruit of the spirit? The gifts of the spirit. Now, that's what when Pentecost was fully come, you had the cloven tongues of fire over these people. They were speaking in tongues. They had all kinds of I mean, that's the gifts of the spirit that is in reference. It would appear that the Pentecost or the Shavuot experience is a reference to that. Get back to it. OK, we'll be right back, everyone, for a final second. When Justin and I found out we were having a little girl, we named her Eliana and started dreaming of what life would be like with her, where we would take her, what we would teach her, and of course, what we would read to her. One day we walked around a bookstore looking for books we might want for her and found nothing. So we started brainstorming what exactly we would want. Even from a young age, we wanted her to know and understand the heart of God and hidden truths that are in ancient biblical manuscripts like the Book of Enoch and the idea of the Prophecy for Children series was born. Justin got hard to work and Praise Yah released the Prophecy for Children series. We are grateful for the support and amazing feedback from others who have been wanting the same for their children. We just found out we will be having a son and we are excited to grow our family and to keep writing books for our children to share with our truth-seeking family. To order these books today, please check out the children's store at sacredwordpublishing.com. As a bookstore for truth seekers, it's our goal to make ancient manuscripts which were once held captive by secretive institutions available for public consideration. In our generation where wisdom has increased as Daniel the prophet foretold, we have access to many of the testimonies our early church brethren were persecuted for preserving. After being hidden for centuries, these manuscripts have been leaked from various sources throughout the earth and it's our goal to gather these sources into printable form to make available for all who seek the ancient way. If you're looking to deepen your studies of the biblical narrative, find these ancient manuscripts and more at sacredwordpublishing.com. Your partnership with Sacred Word Publishing goes further than the publishing of ancient manuscripts and weekly video content. You also make a huge impact across the earth in orphanages in Myanmar, India, Uganda, and Kenya. Your support is crucial for the development of the Ecclesia of Real Truth Seekers. We thank you for joining us in hosting Secrets Revealed, Momentary Zen, the Digital Readers Club, Ask Me Anything series, and other shows that have helped lead so many to the truth of salvation. To become even more involved, please visit patreon.com slash sacredwordpublishing where you can partake in exclusive, interactive, patron-only content and help us continue shining the light of love in this darkened world.
welcome back everybody for final segment this show has gone by super fast uh, but there is some discussion in the chat room tour i wanted to ask you this i know you need to complete um you, the points that you were making but sure. if you would afterwards can you uh tell uh and explain when the sabbath is celebrated there's um discussion as to okay uh, you know when the day starts and okay uh, sure all right yes absolutely uh, I got I got time to do that <clears throat> um, anyway we were at the Pentecost being a, a, a step in the plan of salvation and uh, the the command and unleavened bread was to give up sin just kind of in metaphor or in practice if you will for seven days the idea is that a thinking person a sentient person the one who's actually grateful for being freed from sin, if you will, or freed from bondage, from captivity without having earned it, they're going to say, well, he's only asking us to do it for pretend. It seems like it would be prudent to practice giving it up for real. So when you give up your bad temper, then you ha you're peaceful. When you give up your hatred, then you're loving. When you give up your, I mean, you know, the, the, the again, talking about the fruit of the spirit, by our fruit, we will know them. Well, here's, here's my question. If you personally, and I'm not talking about Zen Garcia, I'm talking about everybody looking in the mirror. If you personally are not displaying the fruit of the Spirit, is the Heavenly Father going to give you the gifts of the Spirit? Mm. Be honest with me. Absolutely mm. not. It's not going to happen. Mm. And so that is why I believe that the Heavenly Father put this particular feast in an equation rather than a fixed date because he knew that, this, that the, the adversary would counterfeit it and it would mislead people. But he also knew that truth seekers would look for it and find what it uh -huh. means. And I think that when we find stuff like this, it, I don't think it means that we are elite, but we are making the effort to become this yes. remnant, this elite, uh, the, the body of believers, if you want to believe. We're not. We're casting off the counterfeits. We're casting off the things, the traditions of men. We're casting off these things that have burdened us. Uh, basically, the the... We've been enslaved to churchianity. It's a form of enslavement right. is what it is, because in order to belong to the church, you have to, believe it, you have to believe a certain way. So, right. and I, quite frankly, you know, Israel, Israel was sovereign. They serve a living deity. They had no encumbrances anywhere else with the world, and they were free. Uh, again, that freedom is means the freedom not the, the freedom to not sin is what it amounts to, not the freedom to sin, but rather the freedom to not sin. And... So we have this equation, and let me just keep going. If if we have this Passover experience where we're freed without merit, then we he's asked us to give up seven days or you know sin for seven days as kind of a practice, and we see where he's going with this little request, and we start giving up the sin for real, we start displaying the fruit of the spirit. Then later he can give us the gifts of the spirit, which is what we see happening in the New Testament for Pentecost. So it seems like the gifts of the spirit are kind of a linked to that festival. Um, the next feast on the list is what? Feast of Trumpets, where it says yes. it's the most festive Down occasion of all the feasts. Absolutely, this is the Fourth of July of the feasts, where you're banging pots and pans and shooting guns and fireworks and any, you know whatever you can want to make noise to, is to get to attention. You know, hey, hey, Father, we're down here. We love you. You know. Uh -huh. It, that was it was a you know it's kind of an all you know you know all in you know party if you will yes. it's not quite it's not mardi gras it's it's fourth of july <laughs> so, yeah, right so anyway so anyway you have that it's basically the most festive occasion of all of them but it's also the most it's a warning it's saying judgment's coming have fun but judgment is coming the next yes. festival the next festival is, of course, Day of Atonement, which is judgment, and then Day of, or the Feast of Tabernacles, when the Father again tabernacles with us. So that's the entire plan of salvation in the feast. It's dress rehearsal. And again, he couches the count to Pentecost in an equation rather than a fixed date because he doesn't want pretenders to get that far. He doesn't want the 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 enemy, if you will, of souls, the, the, the wolves and sheep's clothing. He doesn't want them to get that far. That's This is for people who are truly seeking the truth. And I think that is the reason why he put that in. This is my opinion. This is just my mm -hmm. opinion, that why he put it in an equation rather than a fixed date. That's awesome. So, uh, I, before you move on, I want to share something with you really quickly. It's sure. just a quick quotation that I found in a book called the legends of the patriarchs and the prophets it says this now it was the first day of the seventh month tishri 
the day on which at the close of the world's history, the Lord will come to judge the quick and the dead. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, the, the, um, the, the, the reason I brought it up is because, uh, you know, I think that the, the feasts are, um, because uh, he fulfilled those in his first coming, the spring and summer feasts, and I believe that he will, with his second advent, fulfill the next three. And the that, yeah. yes, and that uh, it says that, you know, he will return. And I believe that the seventh trumpet, you know, the Yom Turah, uh, all of that is connected together uh, with the first of Tishri. And that um, this quotation um, seems to confirm that that is the day that he will return interesting i i yeah. yeah i don't i have i have considered the same thing and i, I i'm not convinced that you're wrong I, th I think that's a very real possibility absolutely i mean it doesn't say it in scripture necessarily but uh that evidence that you found certainly indicates uh that very thing yeah it's interesting uh yep. to say yep. the least but please uh continue and then uh when you get a chance if you would uh on the you know the beginning uh, of the day when, yes the beginning of sure. the day and when sabbath is celebrated this it boinked me in the head big time i mean i was challenged the the father i think he always gives the believer two or three witnesses i mean i had somebody said hey troy what do you think about the beginning of the day he, he thought I, th I think it's blah 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 what do you think i'm like well of course i was raised adventist and you know the sabbaths were from even to even so that meant the days were even to even you know uh, uh -huh. Of course, the Roman days were midnight to midnight and blah, right. blah, blah. So right. anyway, I mean, I was aware that there was a discrepancy between the modern calendar and scriptural calendar. But, you know, I didn't really know how to look at it. Well, several I put I didn't do anything with that information at the time of that challenge. And several months later, uh, maybe even a year later, I got another challenge. I said, hey, Troy, what do you think about the beginning or when the day begins? I think it's blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, no, no, no. I actually didn't do anything with it until the father sent me a third witness. And when I got that third witness, and this was again several months later, I had put it on the back burner for over a year. And I'm like, oh my, this is the father. This is my last chance. The father won't give me any more truth. He's not going to reveal anything to me if, if I don't take this step. So everything I was doing got put on the back burner and I dove into this. And it's not as difficult as you might think, because it's right there, ink on the page. <laughs> so, uh -huh, so right. but, because of the tradition of men, I could read it, and then my brain would interpret something entirely what I'm not, what's not ink on the page. It's what I was taught rather than what I'm reading. Here it is. It's in Genesis right. uh, chapter one, verses three through five. And Elohim said, "Let there be light," and there was light. And Elohim saw the light that it was good. And Elohim, to get this, this is this is important. Divided the light from the darkness, meaning that light right. and dark don't touch. Yes. Okay. And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Right. Yes. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a minute. And what is this divider? What divides day from night? Twilight. Exactly. What divides night from day? Twilight. It's called dawn or morning, but yes. Yes, uh, yes. We have dawn and dusk, day yes. is yom, night is, right. oh boy, uh, lail la is night. Even is Erev, morning is Bokur. There's four different words. And people say, oh, well, evening is night. No, evening is not night. Evening is Erev, and it's the transition period between day and night. night morning yes. is the transition period between night and day. Those yes. are the dividers that are spoken of right here in uh, Genesis 1, verse 4. And basically, evening is when day is slowly mixed with an increasing portion of night until it becomes night. It's like missing, mixing white paint with black. You get various shades of gray until the white actually becomes black because you've got so much black in there. But mm -hmm. there's a process where it's various shades of gray. Well, it's the same thing with evening. You have various shades of night. It's, 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 or, uh, it's, it's day diminishing, becoming night. And that, that transition period is neither night nor day. It's evening. Mm -hmm. And that is the divider. Morning is the divider for morning. Well, and you can prove it by the the verse, the, the last sentence that I did not read. And it says, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Well, that and is a, it's a connective word. If I say Zen and a Troy, 
then I've connected you and I in a sentence. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, what is the connect? What's this? What's before this? And the evening. What happened before the evening? What happened before mm-hmm. this evening that we just experienced? And the the answer is, what did the Father just create? Right. He just created light, and the light yes. he called day. Day. Okay. So now we have and a timeline. Start your start your timeline. Okay. We have day. Click. The timeline's going. Tick 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 mm-hmm. tick 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 tick. And there was evening. Tick tick tick. Yes. Tick 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 tick. And later still, there was morning. First day. So you have it's 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 a it's a sequence of events that you we totally ignored. We say oh evening and morning. Oh that's the day. It starts the evening ends in the morning. Well wait a minute. From evening to morning is night. Mm-hmm, right. Exactly. Yeah. How can that be a day when the father just told us in the previous verse right. or earlier that the light he called day and the darkness he called night. Right. So yes. The day is the lit portion of the day. If the sun's up, it's day. If the sun's down, right. it's night. Right. The darkness is night. The light is day. So it's uh, two approximately 12 hour segments. Now, the day, of right. course, was divided by the sundial. You had 12 hours. The night was divided by watches because obviously there's no sundial that works at night. But mm-hmm. you can prove uh, what I'm saying in John 11, verse 9. And I'm going there right now because I want to just read it to you. I'm not just going to tell you. I'm going to quote it. I'll quote it directly here if I can turn the page, my fat fingers. It says this, and Yeshua answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles not because he sees the light of this world. But if any man walk in the night, he stumbles because he has, there's no light in him. He flat out says there's twelve hours in a day. Of course, that's divided by a sundial. That means that the hours in the Hebrew world or the ancient world were not sixty minutes because in the in the winter the days were shorter and the summer the days were longer. But right. it was still twelve equal segments, regardless yes. of the season. So there's twelve hours in a day, not twenty-four. That's what yes. it says. <laughs> I mean, right. it flat out says it. Okay. Now I'm going to run to a verse that I know everybody is familiar with. And it says this. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it set apart. Uh, Where does it say anything about a Sabbath night? Right. It doesn't. Right from the very beginning in Scripture, day and night are divided. They're separated. They're not even one and the same. And here we start our day at night, which is kind of silly. You know, yes, we, exactly. we say the day begins at evening because no, no, no. It doesn't say right. the day begins at evening. It says the day is the lit part. Right. And then it says, and there was evening. This is a time. It's a, a tick, 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 tick. This is a timeline. And there was evening. Of course, we know that night follows evening. But then it says, and, meaning later still, there is morning. It's a timeline. So if the first day, quote, unquote, ends at morning, then when does the second day begin? In morning. Morning. <laughs> well, yes. yeah, you're exactly right. As soon as the sun comes up, it's the second day. Right. So it's right there, ink on the page, and we have totally ignored it because of our churchianity, our traditions of the churches, and it's 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 right there. In fact, the Father even fusses it. I won't be able to find the second verse that I want to read to you. There's one in Isaiah. Um, maybe there's a something in the marginal reference that will send me to the right direction. But Isaiah 5.20 says this. It says, Woe unto them that call good evil and evil good, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, and put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Awesome. Woe to them that can't figure out the difference between day and night. Right. Woe right. unto them that can't. And I did. I actually put, I wrote it in. It's Job 17. Hey, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to actually cover it, because I like to give more than one witness if I can. Awesome. I wrote it in my margins. <laughs> oh, here we go. First, let's see. Job is before Psalms. All right. It's Psalm 17. Verse 10 and 11. And it says this. But as you all, but as for you all, do you return and come now? For I cannot find one wise man among you. My days are past. My purposes are broken off. Even the thoughts of my heart. They, meaning these people that can't put, he can't find one wise man among them. They change night into day and light is short because of darkness. He says Uh, that they're not wise. Right. They change light for darkness, and they, they're mm-hmm. not wise. You can't find one wise person among them when they do that. And so I, I looked at this information, and I'm like, oh, my stars. 
Yeah. How could I have been so? It's right there, ink on the right. page. And I have I actually have an entire study written on this. It's not as exhaustive as I might like, but it covers an awful lot of territory. If you want a study on the beginning of the day, just ask me for the study on the beginning of the day, and I will email it to you, and you can print it off and share it to your heart's content. I'm going to ask you something different, brother. Sure. Uh, I want to ask you to consider compiling all of your studies together. And let us publish it in book. Uh, that could be done, I suppose. That absolutely yeah. could be done. Let's yeah. do that. Um, if you are willing, uh, we'll we'll publish it and uh, release it for you. And uh, well, that, I think it would be yeah, awesome. That's very. I've yeah. actually had people say, "Do you have a book?" And I say, "No," but I can send you a bunch of studies. <laughs> But a book well, I think it's be... that time. Uh, yeah, I think it's well, that time because you have it all, um, you know, in studies. You might as well just compile sure. it into book form. It'll give you a chance to touch it up and, you know, um, sure. and, and yeah, let's 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 do it. So, yeah, that would be awesome. I think uh, the world would benefit from it. Well, uh, well, I yeah, I'm. I don't. I'm kind of speechless at that. I'm not sure how to respond. I mean, I know that the the the, the body of believers is dying for lack of knowledge. So, yes. um, if I can help that in any way, alleviate that situation, that would be a, a supreme honor. Um, that for you make such an offer that it's very generous of you. And and I I really I mean, in the English language, we don't have the right words. All I can say is thank you. You know what I mean. Um, uh, you know, my, it's I, my honor, brother. Yeah. Well, you know, here's a little anecdote. A friend told me. He says, you know, if 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 you give me fifty cents for a cup of coffee, I say thank you. You know, if uh -huh. you help me, if you help my elderly mother across the street, I say thank you. If yes. you donate a kidney to save my life, all I can say is thank <laughs> you. There's, yeah. I mean, there's no, in the English languages, they don't have enough layers of thank yous to. But this this is a very su uh, supremely generous offer, and I, and I regret that I can only say thank you. That and there's not something more much bigger than that that I can offer. Uh, that's well enough, brother. And uh, everybody in the chat room agrees with me. And yes, um, they are saying book, book, book. book. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do this. We'll do this. I'll kind of okay, go through great. and figure out there because there's a there is an order. Yes, and, of you know, course. Where the, or the chapter should be done. And yeah, absolutely, we can do this. Okay, awesome. Well, yes, um, everybody, uh, you know, in, in due time, uh, we'll get Troy to uh, complete this and uh, we'll release it. And I'm pretty fast at formatting, as everybody knows, so I can <laughs> kick out a book really quick. So, all right, excited. Good news. Indeed, I am. Yeah. I am very excited. Yeah, it's been it's and been then, a, it's been an honor again. You, this has been a blessing for me personally uh, to to do this with you again. I've had fun. Yeah, likewise. Uh, all of us have greatly benefited. I've learned so much, and you know, I'm still new to all of this, and I'm trying to share what I can. And I'm so glad that you know your listeners uh, finally uh, got you to to agree <laughs> to come on with me. And to yeah. share your knowledge, because uh, certainly it's a, been a great benefit. I've, I've learned a lot myself, and I'm continuing to grow in this this area, this topic. Uh, I look forward to you know reading your book and checking out all your studies in that way as well. But uh, but yes, we'll we'll continue in series as well. Um, you do as many shows as you think is necessary to to bring forth uh, you know the things that you have to teach. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. I think I'm scheduled for a couple of weeks from now, so I don't know yeah. what you want to talk about, but um, we'll, well figure that out, I guess. Maybe I, in the, if you have time. time, yeah, in, in doing the the compilation or even uh, outlining the chapters, because that, that's the way I always start a book, is just outline okay. the chapters to get an idea of how I want everything to flow. Uh, sure. So possibly in doing that, you can decide on you know the important topics and things that you'd like to cover and you'd like to share and it could be a, a foreshadowing of the book that will release in due time very good very good thank you so much
Yeah, no problem at all. Uh, if you would, brother, give out all of your contact and sure. uh, you know your website and everything once more, your YouTubes, anything of that Absolutely. nature. Absolutely. I, I wish I knew how to do YouTube. As well. yep. I speak about what? Oh, Speak about your newsletter as well. Oh, uh, okay, yes. I send out a monthly newsletter where I will announce New Moon, the feasts, if there are any, and the weekly Sabbaths. I put some, usually some other information in there as well, but uh, toward the bottom, I have a, a teaching segment where anybody and everybody, it uh, doesn't matter where you are in the world, uh, where what country you're in, uh, it, it will tell you when to look for the moon, what to look for, and where to look. So um, with that information, it's kind of hard to, to not be able to figure out where the how the clock works. So I, I make that offer to you. All you have to do is email me and ask to be put uh, to be included on the newsletter list. And I have to admit, I, there was a very large number of people that uh, requested that after my last program with you. So thank you very much awesome. for that. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so that just email me at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at creationcalendar.com and request any of the studies and or to be added to the newsletter list. And also you can read the studies online at www.creationcalendar.com or on Telegram at t.me forward slash creation calendar. Excellent. Um, well, you know, we're almost near the end of the show, so I want to give you a chance for final commentary and um, anything that you'd, you know, you'd like to share or uh, even what you might be doing or anything that you've learned of new oh boy um i do have something brewing but i can't remember what it is i like i said i've been gone for the last week i just got home last night and i'm going on fumes and so i can't think of what it is that i've been learning or studying but <laughs> mm. <laughs> there is something out there i just can't remember what it is well i, I think it's awesome what you're doing for your friend and helping oh you him heard in about that, that. Manner. okay yeah, yeah so thank so you very I much think yeah, I think that's incredible. And so, um, you know, I would hope yeah. that others also, you know, would learn from your example and helping others. And uh, do you do you mind sharing um, just kind of what you've been doing? If, if sure, it's that's that's fine. Uh, we had a gentleman who is seventy nine years old, and um, he had his um, his wife was removed by the state. She had Alzheimer's and he was terrified that he was next. And he said, Troy, come get me. He doesn't want to be put in a, in a nursing home facility. And, uh, so he is now here in my home and I spent, uh, gone three trips down to the state beneath us, uh, about seven hours, one way I've gone, done three trips in the last 14 days and driving 14 hours, you know, went <laughs> do both ways. And, getting his uh, valuable belongings because really there's nobody there to protect it or watch it other than his nosy neighbors. And so he's concerned that people will rob him blind. So I've been making trips, gathering his, uh, you know, higher dollar items, if you will. And uh, he is now living here and he's safe and he's actually, his health is improving. So, um, awesome. yeah, my, my, my wife and I, we laugh that we take in strays. Uh, we have mm -hmm. another guest here that we actually personally invited. She wasn't a stray, but she's here. And um, so, but we've had like 32 different foster children come through our home and we've adopted 12 children. Um, we've had a family of nine kids live here for nine months and never paid us a dime. We had another family that had three children live here for six months and never paid us a dime. Um, we had a family of feast keepers that left their four children here. They were having marital difficulties and left their four children here for a year uh, and uh, never paid us a dime and we didn't ask for anything. I mean, that was not part of the agreement. You know, had they offered us money, we wouldn't have known what how to react because, you know, well, it's just usually doesn't happen that way. So our door is open. And uh, so, Zen, if you ever need a place to live, you just let me know and I'll come get you. <laughs> I appreciate that, brother, very much so. Um, well, hopefully, you know, with this book and also because um, I'm thinking in my mind that we should set up um, like a Patreon or something for you so that people can to help you because the way that you are blessing others uh, i think that people because they they do it for us you know we we support four orphanages uh across mm -hmm. different parts of the world as well and you know try to give to the orphans and the widows and sure. veterans and sure. people in need disabilities and animals in need and things of that nature as well so 
and people want to give to something that is real and to help people that are really doing the work of the kingdom. And so um, I think, you know, we need to bring you into the 21st century, get you <laughs> set up in some ways, you know, with, um, you know, maybe I even admit, show you I, how to do YouTube and things of that yeah, nature. Yeah, I'm actually a caveman when it comes to all that stuff. So. <laughs> 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 That's funny, bring me in the 21st century. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know, maybe we can help you uh, later on with some of Thank that. You. All right. Hey, Thank appreciate you, you, Troy. Thank you, everyone, again for joining us. Be yeah, blessed. Good night, Shalom. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this video and this broadcast. We appreciate all of you and thank you for your patronage. Please do like and subscribe and share with your friends. God bless all of you and your seeking.